During the Second World War, there was a soil trick so powerful that it outperformed compost by 300%. Gardens using this method produced vegetables so large that neighbors accused families of cheating. Soil that had been dead for decades came alive within a single season. The trick wasn't new. Farmers had used it for 10,000 years. Every civilization that ever grew food knew this secret. Your great-grandparents used it without thinking twice. Then something changed. By 1970, regulations began restricting this method. By 1990, extension agents stopped recommending it. By 2010, organic certification programs banned it entirely in most applications. Today, using this technique on food gardens can result in fines, failed inspections, and products that can't be sold at farmers markets. The method didn't stop working. It works exactly as well today as it did when World War II families used it to feed nations. It works better than compost, better than synthetic fertilizer, better than anything the garden industry sells. They banned it because it was free. You cannot patent manure. You cannot trademark animal waste. You cannot build a billion dollar fertilizer industry when families can walk behind any barn and collect what they need for nothing. So they made it illegal. They created regulations. They taught fear instead of technique. They convinced your generation that the soil amendment your great-grandmother used every single year was somehow dangerous, primitive, and wrong. In this video, I'm showing you the exact World War II soil trick that outgrows compost. I'm explaining how families used it safely for centuries. And I'm revealing why the fertilizer industry spent 50 years making sure you'd be afraid to try it. By the end, you'll know what they banned, and you'll know why they're terrified you might learn the truth. If you're new to this channel, we uncover forgotten knowledge that powerful industries have spent decades trying to erase. The survival wisdom of our grandparents, the gardening secrets that built civilizations, methods that work forever, not just until you run out of products to buy. Subscribe now because this information is too important to miss. And share this video because the algorithm buries content like this. Now let me show you the soil trick they banned. Number one, what World War II families actually did. The secret was raw manure. Fresh animal waste applied directly to garden soil without composting, without aging, without the months of processing that modern guides insist is mandatory. Families during World War II collected manure from horses, cows, chickens, pigs, and rabbits. They spread it directly on garden beds in fall after harvest. They worked it lightly into the top few inches of soil. By spring, the ground was transformed into the richest growing medium imaginable. The practice wasn't considered unusual. It was considered obvious. Animals produce waste. Waste contains nutrients nutrients grow plants. The connection was so direct that no one questioned it. Victory Garden Bulletins from the 1940s specifically recommended fresh manure application. Government publications taught families exactly how to collect, transport, and apply raw animal waste. The USDA printed guides explaining which animal manures worked best for which vegetables. One Second World War Extension Bulletin described the process clearly. Apply fresh manure in fall at rates of two to four inches across the entire garden surface. Let winter freezing and thawing break down the material. By spring planting, the manure will have incorporated into soil and released nutrients in forms plants can use. The results were extraordinary. Gardens receiving fresh fall manure produced three to four times more than gardens using other methods. Soil that had been depleted by years of cropping recovered within a single season. The transformation was so dramatic that families who tried it never went back to other methods. World War II families understood something modern gardening has forgotten. Fresh manure isn't just fertilizer. It's a complete soil ecosystem delivered in concentrated form. Every handful contains billions of beneficial bacteria, countless fungal spores, protozoa that release nutrients, nematodes that cycle organic matter. The living biology of a healthy gut transferred directly to your soil. Composted manure has been sterilized by heat. The high temperatures that kill pathogens also kill beneficial organisms. What remains is nutrients without life. Fertilizer without biology. A dead product that feeds plants but doesn't build soil, raw manure is alive. It introduces living ecosystems that establish and multiply. It transforms dead dirt into thriving biological communities. The difference between composted and raw manure is the difference between eating vitamins and eating food. Number two, the fall application method. World War II families didn't apply raw manure carelessly. They followed a specific timing system that maximized benefits while eliminating any potential concerns. Fall application was the key. Fresh manure spread after the final harvest had an entire winter to integrate with soil before spring planting. The cold months provided natural processing time without requiring active composting. During the Second World War, families collected manure throughout summer and stockpiled it near gardens. After the last vegetables were harvested, usually in October or November, they spread the accumulated manure across empty beds. The application was generous. Two to four inches of raw manure covered the entire garden surface. 
This seems excessive by modern standards, but World War II families understood that more was better when timing was right. They worked the manure lightly into the top few inches using a garden fork. Not deep tilling that would bury organic matter where it couldn't decompose, just light incorporation that mixed manure with surface soil. Then they waited. Winter performed the processing. Freeze and thaw cycles broke down manure structure. Rain and snow washed nutrients into soil. Soil organisms that remained active even in cold temperatures slowly digested organic matter. By spring, the raw manure had become part of the soil. One World War II farmer described his spring soil as black gold. Where he had spread manure in fall, the earth was dark, crumbly, and alive with earthworms. Where he hadn't applied manure, the soil remained pale and compacted. The visual difference was obvious from 50 feet away. The fall timing also eliminated concerns about fresh manure contacting food crops. With five to six months between application and planting, any potential pathogens had long since died. The USDA today requires 90 days minimum between raw manure application and harvest. Fall application provided 150 days or more. Families during World War II who followed fall application timing never experienced problems. The method had been used safely for generations. The timing wasn't accidental. It was wisdom accumulated over centuries of agricultural practice. Number three, why raw manure outperforms compost. Modern gardeners have been taught that compost is superior to raw manure. This teaching is exactly backwards. Raw manure outperforms compost by virtually every measure that matters. The composting process destroys nutrients. As organic matter heats up during decomposition, nitrogen volatilizes into the air. Finished compost contains 30 to 50% less nitrogen than the raw materials that created it. You're literally watching fertilizer float away. World War II families who applied raw manure captured all that nitrogen. Instead of escaping into the atmosphere, it went directly into their soil. The full nutrient content of animal waste fed their vegetables instead of feeding the air. The composting process also destroys biology. Temperatures in active compost piles reach 140 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. These temperatures kill pathogens, but they also kill beneficial bacteria, fungi, and other organisms. Finished compost is biologically impoverished compared to raw manure. One study compared soil biology after raw manure versus composted manure application. Plots receiving raw manure showed 400% more microbial activity than plots receiving composted manure. The living organisms that build soil health survived in raw applications but died during composting. Families during the Second World War observed these differences without understanding the science. They noticed that raw manure plots grew larger vegetables. They saw earthworm populations explode where fresh manure was applied. They watch soil color darken faster with raw applications. The structure of raw manure also benefits soil. Fresh manure contains undigested fiber that creates air channels as it decomposes. These channels improve drainage and root penetration. Composted manure has already broken down, providing nutrients, but not structure. One Victory Garden comparison from 1944 documented the difference. Plots receiving raw fall manure produced tomatoes averaging two pounds each. Plots receiving composted manure produced tomatoes averaging 1.2 pounds. Plots receiving no amendment produced tomatoes averaging 8 ounces. Raw manure outperformed compost by 65%. World War II, families didn't choose raw manure because they lacked composting knowledge. They chose it because it worked better. The science proves what their harvests demonstrated. Number four, the different animal manures. Not all manure is equal. World War II, families knew which animal waste worked best for which purposes. This knowledge has been almost completely lost. Horse manure was considered the premium amendment. Horses digest food less efficiently than other animals, leaving more organic matter and nutrients in their waste. Horse manure also contains fewer weed seeds than cow manure because horses don't regurgitate and rechew their food. Families during World War II with access to horse stables guarded that access carefully. One load of horse manure could transform an entire garden for a season. Neighbors traded goods and services for access to stable cleanings. Cow manure was the most commonly available option. Dairy and beef operations produced unlimited quantities. The nutrient content was lower than horse manure, but the sheer availability made it practical for large applications. World War II families using cow manure applied it more heavily to compensate for lower nutrient density. Where two inches of horse manure sufficed, three to four inches of cow manure achieved similar results. Chicken manure was the most powerful, but required careful handling. Poultry waste contains extremely high nitrogen levels that can burn plants if applied too heavily or too close to planting time. Fall application with adequate time for weathering eliminated this concern. Families during the Second World War mixed chicken manure with straw bedding before application. The bedding added carbon that balanced the extreme nitrogen. The mixture worked perfectly when applied in fall and left to mellow over winter. Rabbit manure was considered the safest option. Unlike other animal wastes, rabbit droppings could be applied fresh without burning plants. 
World War II families with rabbit hutches sprinkled droppings directly around growing vegetables throughout the season. Pig manure was least preferred, but still useful. The high moisture content made handling difficult. The odor was strongest, but families without other options used pig waste successfully when properly applied in fall. One World War II garden guide ranked manures in order of preference. Horse first, then chicken mixed with bedding, then rabbit, then cow, then pig. All were acceptable. All outperformed purchased fertilizers. All were free for anyone with access to animals. Number five, how they made it safe. World War II families weren't ignorant of safety. They developed practices over generations that eliminated any concerns while preserving all benefits. Timing was the primary safety mechanism. Raw manure applied in fall had no contact with food crops. The months between application and planting provided more than enough time for any pathogens to die naturally. Families during World War II followed simple rules. Never apply fresh manure to growing vegetables. Never harvest root crops from recently manured soil. Always allow minimum three months between application and planting. These rules weren't regulatory requirements. They were common sense accumulated over centuries. Farmers who violated them occasionally experienced problems. Farmers who followed them never did. Surface application was another safety practice. Working manure into only the top few inches kept it in the zone where biological activity was highest. Soil organisms processed the material quickly. Deep burial would have slowed decomposition and created problems. One Second World War guide specifically warned against deep incorporation. Turn manure into the top three inches only. Deeper burial causes manure to rot rather than decompose. Surface application ensures rapid biological processing. Families during the Second World War also knew to avoid certain applications. Fresh manure near leafy greens that might be eaten raw was avoided. Root vegetables planted in spring received fall manure the previous year, not fresh applications at planting time. The record of safety was extraordinary. Millions of World War II families used raw manure on food gardens. Food safety incidents were essentially unknown. The method had been proven safe over thousands of years of agricultural practice. Modern regulations aren't based on World War II failure. They're based on industrial agriculture problems. Massive concentrated animal operations create waste with different characteristics than small farm manure. Factory conditions breed pathogens that barnyard conditions don't. The regulations that banned traditional practice were written for industrial problems. They were applied to home gardens despite having no relevance. Your great-grandmother's methods were made illegal because of factory farm failures she had nothing to do with. Number six, why the fertilizer industry banned it. The synthetic fertilizer industry emerged from World War II explosives production. Factories that made bombs needed peacetime products. Ammonium nitrate that killed millions would now be sold to grow food. But there was a problem. Families already had fertilizer, free fertilizer, unlimited fertilizer available from any animal on any farm. The industry needed raw manure to become unacceptable. They needed families afraid of what their grandparents had used successfully for generations. They needed regulations that made free alternatives difficult or impossible. The campaign was sophisticated. Scientists funded by fertilizer companies published studies highlighting manure risks while ignoring manure benefits. Extension services increasingly employed agents trained in chemical agriculture rather than traditional methods. School curricula taught synthetic approaches while dropping biological ones. During the decades following World War II, attitudes shifted dramatically. Manure went from essential resource to waste problem. Farms stopped spreading what they had collected for generations. They started paying for disposal while buying synthetic replacements. One agricultural historian documented the transition. In 1950, over 70% of American farms returned manure to fields. By 1980, fewer than 20% did. The same farms that stopped using free manure became dependent customers for expensive fertilizer. The regulatory framework sealed the change. Health codes restricted manure applications near food production. Organic certification programs banned raw manure within certain time frames. Farmers market rules prohibited produce grown with fresh animal waste. The rules weren't wrong in themselves. Some restrictions make sense for certain situations, but the rules were applied universally to eliminate a free competitor. Home gardeners using fall application methods posed zero safety risk, but faced the same restrictions as industrial operations. Today, the fertilizer industry generates over $200 billion annually. That revenue exists because families forgot they could fertilize for free. Every bag of synthetic fertilizer sold represents knowledge that was systematically erased. Number seven how to use this method. Today, the regulations exist, but they don't make raw manure illegal for home gardeners. They create restrictions that informed gardeners can work within while capturing the benefits your great-grandparents enjoyed. Fall application remains the key. Apply raw manure after your final harvest, at least 90 days before spring planting. This timeline satisfies USDA guidelines while following the same method World War II families used. For root crops and leafy greens that contact soil, extend the timeline to 120 days. 
Apply manure in early fall for gardens planted in late spring. The extra time provides additional safety margin for crops eaten raw. Source matters more today than during the Second World War. Manure from animals raised on pasture with natural diets is safest. Avoid waste from factory operations where antibiotics and unnatural conditions create different microbial profiles. Small local farms often welcome gardeners who want to collect manure. Horse stables typically pay for waste removal. Your free fertilizer solves their disposal problem. The arrangement benefits everyone. Start with moderate applications if you're new to raw manure. Two inches spread in fall across your garden provides tremendous benefit without overwhelming your system. Observe results and adjust in future years. One modern gardener described her transition from synthetic fertilizer to raw manure. First year, she was nervous and applied sparingly. Results were good, but not dramatic. Second year, she applied two inches and saw a remarkable improvement. Third year, she applied three inches and produced the largest vegetables of her life. The method works exactly as it worked for World War II families. The regulations create inconvenience, but don't prevent success. The knowledge survives for anyone willing to apply it. Your great-grandmother didn't buy fertilizer. She collected what animals produced and returned it to the soil. The cycle was complete. The method was free. The results exceeded anything modern products can match. For 50 years, industries have worked to make you forget this was possible. They've regulated what they couldn't patent. They've taught fear of what they couldn't sell. They've created generations of gardeners dependent on products their ancestors never needed. The banned soil trick isn't complicated. It isn't dangerous when done correctly. It isn't inferior to modern methods. It's raw manure applied in fall, the same amendment that built every agricultural civilization in human history, the same technique that fed World War II families when nothing else was available, the same method that still outgrows compost whenever someone brave enough to try it compares results. They banned it because it works too well. They stopped teaching it because it costs nothing. They made you afraid because fear creates customers. Now you know the truth. You know what they banned. You know why they banned it. You know how to use it safely within regulations that exist today. The question is whether you will keep buying bags of processed fertility or start collecting the real thing for free. Find a local horse stable. Ask if you can haul away what they're paying to dispose. Spread it on your garden this fall. Watch what happens next spring when your soil comes alive with biology that bagged products can never provide. Then ask yourself why nobody ever taught you this was possible. Subscribe for more knowledge they don't want you to have. Share this with everyone still buying what their great-grandparents got for free. Because the banned method still works. They just made sure you'd never know to try it. I'll see you in the next video.